Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. When somebody says, what are you doing? Or what do you do when you go to office? What work does a software industry does? So I will tell them that as a software development, as a software industry, we work on these parameters. So we go to the client, we take their requirements, we do design part. Once the design is ready, we start with the development. Once the development is done, then we go for testing. Once testing is done, we go for deployment and then we go for maintenance and then the cycle continues. Okay. Now, it's not like this process has started today. It has pro started long back. So what has changed? So earlier, we were following waterfall model. When I talk waterfall model, we were talking about monolithic architecture. Monolithic architecture means one single big piece of software. We used to package everything and put it on physical servers. And we had in-house data centers. Means company used to buy those servers and they used to keep it in their premises and they used to run everything. But this architecture had problems. Like it was very much time consuming. If you have a bug, you have to stop everything and then you have to fix the bug. It may take one day, two day, five days. And if there is a complex requirement, then there are a lot of problems. So net net, this waterfall model was not as per my expectation. So the company or the industry came up with a new model, which says agile methodology, scrum methodology. Now here, the same monolithic application, we are breaking into small, small pieces. Okay. And in each sprint, we take one story or one small piece of work and we work on that and then we deliver it to the client. So now we are talking about virtual machines and we are talking about hosted environment. This is okay. The client is also kind of happy and uh, we are also delivering things to the cloud, but few problems were addressed. Still few problems were there. When I say few problems were addressed like Am I delivering to the client uh, after six months, after 10 months? No, I am delivering to the client every two weeks, three weeks. So some problem was resolved, but there was one major problem which was still coming or which was still there in the entire process of this software development life cycle. This problem is the wall of confusion. Now, what is this wall of confusion? Now, as a developer, okay. I think that my code is working perfectly fine. I have done the unit testing, go and deploy it on the prod environment. The moment you give for deployment on the prod environment, the prod guy is saying, Hey, it is not working here. Take it back. Now you are saying, no, no, it is working. He's saying, no, it is not working. Similarly, when you deploy your code to UAT environment or test environment, there also, there are same problem. The tester is saying the code is not working. You as a developer are saying is saying it is working. So this is called as wall of confusion. You as a developer, you as a tester, you as a DBA, DBA admin, you know what's happening in your area. Okay. Let me say you are a tester, you are an automation tester. So you know Selenium very good. And then you know how to test, you know to how to write automated test cases. But do you know what is happening on development side? Do you know what is happening on networking side? Do you know what is happening on deployment side? So no, you don't know you don't have the greater picture. So there is where this wall of confusion comes. Teams with each other, teams are working in silos and what happens at the end, the deliverable gets affected. Means you're not able to deliver to the client on time. If you don't give on time delivery, the client will be unhappy. He may take the project away from you. So what we have done now is we have started with a new process, okay, which we say is a DevOps process. So we bring, bring our developer operations. I will say it is DevSecOps security. I'm bringing my developer, my operations team, my security team, my testing team, my QA team, my network team, every team I'm working or I'm bringing all of them together. And I'm saying, let's all work together as one team. So now I will not be talking about monolithic architecture and an end architecture. I'll be talking about microservices. 
when i start talking about microservices i'll be talking about docker containers i'll be talking about kubernetes and i will start talking about cloud like azure aws gcp so if i do something like this i will be able to achieve the goals very soon so if you see here in waterfall model the design is like tell me design is taking some two two weeks code is taking some eight weeks testing is another three weeks deployment after two months so basically the client has to wait six months to get the deliverable after six months if he raises a problem again six months so we don't have this much time nowadays companies are looking to develop fast and deploy fast so there is a key thing coming into picture there is something called time to market how quickly you can develop and deliver it to the client is very important so earlier people were not that bothered companies were not that bothered but now people are very 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 concerned about time to market obviously agile is better than what water, waterfall model but not as good as devops in devops you can code test deploy code test deploy and you will be quite astonished to know that there are companies who deploy many a times in a day so if you come here there are companies like amazon who deploy 23000 times in a day there are companies like google who deploy the code or make code changes 5500 times in a day netflix is 500 times a day facebook is one time a day so even if you consider like once in a day i have to deploy the change can i attain this kind of flexibility by using uh, old methodology the answer is no you have to come up with a new methodology so now what we understood is that devops is need of the hour i need devops if i have to grow with this competitive world the organization will need devops if the organization needs devops it means i have to learn devops if i don't know devops and then i have to implement it now as and when devops come it will come with 100 rumors some person will say devops is a role some person will say devops is a team some person will say devops is tools it is all about scripts but is it like that no i will say devops is a never ending process you improve whatever you have done you improve it day by day so here we talk about bringing agility to the team means if the customer says okay i want to change this how quickly can you make that change it is all about automation now when i say time to market okay if you have to make something very fast deploy it very fast you need automation you need tools which can automate things for you there are multiple tools available in the market can i learn everything can i use everything the answer is no so the good tools whatever are their best practices i need to implement them and then i say it's a cultural change now you will not say that it is my code your code or it is developers code no it is our code as a team i own it so now when you say that i want to become a devops engineer you can't think like a developer you can't think like a qa or a tester you can't think like an IT operations guy. You can't think like a security guy. You have to think like a DevOps. So if somebody says, what is DevOps? I'll say, DevOps is like an all-rounder. You need to know little bit of everything. Little bit of development, little bit of testing, little bit of IT operations, little bit of scripting, little bit of everything. So people have taken it a step ahead and they also brought security in picture. So now we don't say DevOps, we say DevSecOps means security is also an integral part of my application now the question comes how can i become a devops engineer i come from a totally different background i come from a bpo background i come from a db background i have never done scripting i have never written a code how can i become a devops engineer so to become a devops engineer you have to follow this path you have to learn a programming or a scripting language it is must if somebody is telling no no without that only you can manage I say no, it cannot happen because you have to write YAML scripts, you have to write Groovy scripts, you have to do little bit of coding, if not 100% coding, little bit definitely it is needed. So you will learn a little bit of programming, little bit of scripting language along with me. Basically if you learn Unix or shell scripting, 
60 to 70 percent of the work is done on top of that if you start learning yaml yaml scripting is very easy to understand very easy to write so if you learn these two 70 90 percent work is done and the rest 10 is groovy scripting which is used for jenkins pipeline so if you learn shell scripting groovy scripting and yaml scripting 100 percent your work is done then we need to learn some version control tool it can be git it can be bitbucket it can be some tool like that but you need to learn one version control tool then you need to learn some build automation tool like maven ant gradle something like that then you need to learn a configuration management and deployment tool like chef puppet ansible any one of them then you need to learn a ci cd tool like jenkins travis circle ci test automation tool junit selenium anything is okay logging and monitoring tool tool there are a lot of tools prometheus gafana node exporter zabex nagios there's a big list of tools used for monitoring out of this prometheus gafana is one of the most widely used tools you need to learn database mysql is there when you talk about aws rds is there containerization tool you need to learn about docker container orchestration tool you need to learn about kubernetes cloud computing environment you need to learn aws or azure or gcp any one of them now if you learn all of these things then you can say that yes i am on the path to become a devops engineer and then you can say yeah i can be a devops engineer now once you become a devops engineer okay just by learning these things you will not become a devops engineer you have to implement these things in a hands-on oriented manner it means you need to have a practical knowledge of all these things just you go to internet you'll find 100 documents on git you'll find 200 documents on kubernetes you will say 500 documents on jenkins but will that thing make you a devops engineer the answer is no because your end motto is to grab a job wherever you are whatever you're doing your end motto is to grab a job as a devops engineer so when you go to to a market and say that hey i am a devops engineer i have two years of experience then he will say okay tell me which project you have worked on what work experience you have how do you troubleshoot what are the steps you take when you face a problem what is your day-to-day -day activity so if you if you are in a position to answer those questions then only you will pass the interview else you will be tata bye bye now in this training what I have done is or what I am doing right now is I have designed this course or this training in such a way that we take it in a hands-on oriented manner 70 to 80 percent of the content will be pure hands-on okay the more hands-on you do the more confidence you get you remember things you start implementing the DevOps pipeline on your own and this project stays with you lifelong you start with the project from day one it is not like i will uh, say okay towards the end i will teach you the project no the project starts at day one we learn a concept we implement it in our project we learn another concept concept we implement it in our project and in this span of this each and every concept with me i'm not in a hurry to just okay two months i'll finish the course i'm not in a hurry to finish the course i will take ample amount of time to make you understand what is what so whenever i teach something i'll tell how why what anything anything and look for these three answers how why what if you are able to answer these questions you are done with the training so in this training i'll give you a clear picture of what we are doing why we are doing and how we are doing so with this training program you can easily put two years of experience now let me say if you have five years of overall experience you can very well say that three years i have worked on my previous technology two years i have worked on a devops as a devops engineer then the interviewer will ask okay in two years what you have done this is what i have done whatever i'll teach you in the project you can put that thing now i am a person who directly come from the industry every day i'm facing that environment every day i'm seeing those challenges so I'm not like any XYZ trainer who has read some book or seen some slides or seen some videos and trying to teach you. No, I come directly from the industry, directly first hand experience is what I'm going to give you. 
and this is what is expected when you go for a training i am very very sure that most of you are might, might have encountered a friend or you might have gone directly to a interview where you just got rejected because he was asking scenario based questions he was asking real time questions and you never had that experience and you were not able to but i can assure you with this training 200% you will be able to answer these questions now moving ahead I'll, I'll take all the questions give me some time i'll take all the questions why should i learn devops why should i spend money and time now whatever the companies are spending here in 2020 2021 it is just 4 billion dollars by 2026 it is expected to grow up at least at least four to five times and quality devops engineers are being hunted in the market so if you just put your resume as I am a DevOps engineer, I am a site reliability engineer. Every day, two to three calls you will get. Some consultancy will call, some companies will call because everybody is looking for this market opportunity. So there is a very good opportunity to enter into the DevOps world at this point of time. Now, what do I do in the training? How is it different? So when I start my training i start in this way i assume that you are a beginner you don't know anything you don't have any programming skills you don't have any scripting knowledge so i start as a beginner i'll teach you the basic things like what is linux what is operating system what is linux what is unix what is the difference what is shell scripting then i take you a step ahead where i say you are a practitioner here i start teaching you the ci cd process what is ci what is cd how to do testing here how to do a delivery here Obviously, all the tools will be covered here. Then one level ahead where I say that you are a proficient now. We start talking about deployment. We ta start talking about Terraform where we start talking about infrastructure as a code. Then at champ level, I start talking about deployment orchestration, start talking about Kubernetes, cloud. And here down the line, we also learn Python and other scripting skills. Okay. Now, when you jump into the DevOps world, you'll see a hell lot of tools are available in the market. Do I need everything? Should I learn everything? The answer is no. There's no need to learn everything. You can pick few tools and you can get started. So when I say CI CD, I will be planning or I will be developing a CI CD pipeline with you. So we will learn a little bit of development. Some development we will do, little bit of coding we will do, Java, Python, Node.js, any language we can pick and we can do a little bit of coding, not very much. Then we will learn what is Git, how Git works, what is GitHub. Then we will learn what is Maven, how Maven works, how can Git and Maven be integrated. Then we start learning about testing, how to do testing using JUnit and Selenium. Then we move ahead and we start talking about Jenkins, how to integrate Jenkins with all these tools. What is Jenkins, how it works, how it can help my CI CD process. Then we start talking about Ansible, how to do deployment, how to do configuration management, what is Docker, what is Kubernetes, how do they help me. Then while monitoring, we learn Prometheus Gafana. All these things we learn in the span of the training. So the training will be something like this. So we cover Git GitHub, we learn Nexus, we learn testing with JUnit, we learn Maven, we learn Jenkins, Jira, SonarCube, JFrog Artifactory, Ansible, Docker. Kubernetes, Apache HTTPD, Nginx, Tomcat, Database, and different versions of Linux like Ubuntu, Red Hat. And then we learn a little bit of coding when it comes to Python and Java. We will also learn Unix because it is one of the mandatory things. And at the end, we learn Node Exporter, Prometheus Gafana for monitoring. And then towards the end, to automate the entire infrastructure, we start learning Terraform. So if you learn these many tools, there are some 15 to 20 tools here. If you learn these many tools, I am assuring you, you will easily find a job because if you go to the market, these are the most widely used tools. Thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.